Culture is an aspect of society that defines much of the way we live our lives. From how we dress to the types of buildings that surround us, the influence is apparent everywhere. But how have we adapted and been able to move past what could be considered an obstacle? The role of culture in architecture is not always as beautiful as what the facade should look like. There have been many times when the society in which one lives controls the architecture and the functions, particularly when regarding the role of women. Throughout history, there have been numerous occasions which the lesser role of women was reflected in the architecture of the time. In the early mosque, women were often limited full access to the public in the form of a screen partition, as well as placed behind the men during times of prayer. There was not a choice of the architect to design a separate place for the women, but a correlation to their lesser role in society. Similarly, in Victorian architecture, women were given separate rooms from men. These rooms include an apartment, boudoir, morning room, and a drawing room. Men were given libraries, smoking rooms, gentlemen's rooms, gun rooms, and snuggeries. Architecture is the tool used to implement the gender separation ideals in many cultures, but new architecture is attempting to change that. Similar instances can be seen throughout the world and throughout history, but as the role of women grew in particular cultures, so did their influence to architecture. No longer did the culture control the architecture. That most women, when they are reaching that peak age where they would start to become practicing architects, licensed, maybe uh, running a project, maybe even their own firm, it's at that time when they uh, need to decide if they're going to start a family. So sometimes that collision doesn't end up being very productive. For, um, for their career because there's conflict there in terms of time and being able to dedicate their time to both equally. In new designs, the architect controls the architecture and its uses. For example, the Anbar House in Saudi Arabia was designed specifically to challenge the concepts of gender segregation. Architect Peter Barber comments, Muslim sexuality is territorial. Its regulatory mechanisms consist primarily in strict allocation of space to each sex. Anbar House specifically separates areas to comment on the Muslim cultural views, but it also allows Barber to remain in control of how this space is divided. The women still have separate spaces, but they are placed slightly higher than the men's spaces. In a country where the men are the dominant gender, a move like this is highly controversial. By doing this, Barbara has adapted the culture and is now the full influence on the architecture's program and function. Shifts in these gender roles have been translated into many new designs as well. Sarah Wigglesworth's offices and housing in the Stock Orchard Street project are a great example of shifting and manipulating normal gender roles. The household is historically seen as the workplace for women while offices are seen as the men's. In the Stock Orchard Street design, the offices are upholstered and lavish while the houses are cold and made of steel. The idea behind typical house and office attitudes and aesthetics are switched in order to comment on the shift women have had to the workplace. As feminist theory explores and analyzes gender equality, stereotyping, oppression, patriarchy, Feminist architects challenged the way the fa traditional family would live. Dolores Hayden, author of The Grand Domestic Revolution, sees feminism in architecture as redefining of housework and the housing needs of women and their families, pushing architects and urban planners to reconsider the effects of design on a family life. True architecture like Schroeder House, E1027, Villa Stein de Mozzi, Farmsworth, family life, women's right can be redefined. As Wigglesworth put it, the capacity of architecture to be critical depends on its context. Movable walls and partitions of the 
open floor plan found in these houses allowed the cushioning and the formation of new generals, as opposed to the traditional Victorian architecture with fixed floor plans. I'm going to probably take feminism a step further and say that um, one way that feminism is maybe contributing to changes in the profession and modern day practice the idea that we are actually um, thinking more about collaboration. I wouldn't say that feminism gets to hang their hat on like, that. That's what started um, collaboration more. But I do think that it's evolving the profession in interesting ways. Um, and I would say that one thing, at least for some, some architects in my generation, I think we're trying to find ways to not have so much that difference anymore. We certainly can celebrate the differences, but I, we also realize that we all just want to be architects, and we all just want to be designers. And um, that is, for me, first and foremost, Feminism in architecture has called for us to question how architecture has influenced gender roles and relations in our society. Besides that, it has initiated a step towards a more unbiased architecture with an intent to increase the status of the women in the society and to make it apparent in the local architecture. The architecture now aims for creating a pleasant habitable space for the family instead of restricting their designs to the gender roles set up by the people then. Feminism has challenged the male-dominated world with an aim that a new history will include the ladies.